All right. Polygons. Uh, definition, what's a polygon? Well, first of all, many, right? Polygons are sides. So definition, a simple closed figure, closed, formed by, well, what does that mean, closed? What does that mean? Yeah, like the shape has to be finished to get the, to get the, uh, this, uh, the So is this open or closed? This is an open one because a close would be, you know, I'm doing all this weird stuff, but then I meet. So you can't really tell where it begins and ends. You're kind of, you know, I, I can trace it that way. So a closed circle kind of like closes off. Okay, so um, that would be closed, this would be open. So it's a closed figure formed by three or more coplanar line segments. We call those things sides. Sides meet at endpoints called um, vertices or at a vertex, right? Yeah, nothing new. So let's look at these. First of all, let's decide, are these polygons or are they not polygons? Polygon? Yes. 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 Is it closed? Yes. Is it uh, coplanar line segments? Yep. They meet at these vertices. A coplanar would be something that's three-dimensional. So maybe I've got some sides that go up in the air. You know, so that maybe they come towards you a little bit. Uh, polygon, not polygon? Uh, no. no, not closed. Polygon? Yes. Polygon? No. no. Well, this is a closed figure. Why isn't this one a polygon? What's wrong with it? Curve. Yeah, it's got a curve. They have to be made up of line segments. Polygon? Yes. Polygon. Yes. Good. All right. So that's, that's not so bad. Uh, let's look at this here. Um, you can have a concave polygon or a convex polygon. <coughs> concave polygon have a reflex angle. Now, for some reason, we don't talk about reflex angles. But we talk about acute angles, right angle, obtuse angles. A reflex angle is one that goes past 180 mark. So, um, acute angle, 90 degrees, obtuse. So, if I'm going all the way around from here, that would be like a reflex angle. Now, convex ones don't have reflex angles. So, if I'm looking at this, um, which ones are concave and which ones are convex? So, we're going to circle the concave ones. So I like to think of the concave ones, they kind of cave in a little bit. So if I look at these interior angles here, do any of them look like they're more than 180 degrees? No? So what kind is this? Convex. So I would put a box around this guy. I can make this slate. Convex. Um, concave have a reflex angle. So I look at all the internal angles. Are any of these have angles that are bigger than 180? Yeah, this guy. So this would be a concave one. So I circle that up. Concave. Caves in. Uh, concave or convex? Okay. This is convex. There are no um, reflex angles in there. So that's my box, right? <laughs> All right, now this guy. Concave, convex, what do you think? What is it? Well, let's look at the angles. Okay, that one doesn't look bigger than 180. No, no, no. Well, what about this angle? What about this angle? Right, they're bigger than 180 degrees. That's a reflex angle. This one is concave. Sorry, I'm circling. It's concave. Now, for our purposes, we're mostly using these um, convex ones that look like this or this. Not so much with the concave, but you need to be able to recognize which one's which. All righty. Well, yes, yes, yes. Will it be like a question on the test saying like which is concave or which is It's possible. It's possible. That's all I'll say. And it's fair game. If I'm talking about it, it's fair game. Okay. Again, this is all review, right? Regular polygon. What does that mean? Regular. What does that mean? Yes. I guess. <laughs> You're very smart. She not just read the notes, it tells us. Yeah, so they, all the sides are congruent, all the angles are congruent. And um, a diagonal is when you connect two non consecutive, and that's important, vertices. So here's two vertices, C and D, but they are consecutive. They're one right after the other. Connecting them does not form a diagonal, that's a side. But if I look at B and D, they're not one right after the other. If I connect them, I get a diagonal. Now there's other diagonals in here, right? Like this one, if I can draw it, trying to connect it to A. That's a diagonal. This one's a diagonal. Uh, yeah, A to D. There's a diagonal. 
So um, we can have many diagonals in a shape. So they just connecting two non-consecutive vertices, that's a diagonal. What else do we already know, we think? Oh, how to name them. So this was on the warm-up, how to name them. So what do you call a three-sided polygon? Andrew, a triangle. A triangle. Pretty good. Three angles. Um, do you know there's another name? Because this says I want more three sides. It's another name for a triangle.
So 3 minus 2 times 180, right? Plus 3 minus 2. Good. Good, it works. Yeah. So yeah, that works for anything. Now, why does it work? So what you can think about is you can take any um, pentagon and draw, draw diagonals from one vertex. Just draw the diagonals. So here's a quadrilateral. If there's only really one. You know, like if I started a vertex, how many can I draw? You just draw one. So how many triangles does that form? Two. And what is the sum of the angles in this triangle? So and what's the sum of this? So that's two times 180. Now this is a pentagon, five-sided. Pick a vertex. Draw all the possible diagonals. So, right, that's not a diagonal. But this one is, this one is. I can't do that one, right? So the two sides around it don't count. So how many triangles do I have? Three. three of them. Each one of them, the sum of the angles is 180, right? So that would be three times 180. A hexagon, right, six-sided figure, has uh, three the, of diagonals that I can draw from a vertex. So now I'm getting four triangles. So four times 180 will give me all the angles. Heptagon, I can form five of these triangles. Octagon, I can form six of them. So I don't, it's always two less than the number of sides because the two sides connected don't count, right? So if you have n sides, if you have an n gone, how many triangles can you form? N minus two. So what is the sum of the angles? Well, each triangle is 182. So you just multiply by the number of triangles. And there you go, you've got that formula. And it works for any polygon. So um, there are a little corollary to it, which is the, the interior angles of a quadrilateral are 180, right? Here's my quadrilateral, or 360, rather. 2 times 180 is 360. We know that, right? Right? Don't we, don't we know that? If you add up the angles in a quadrilateral, it's 360. That's one of them you have to know. You have to know the triangle. You have to know the quadrilateral. Uh, yeah, quadrilateral. The other ones, you can use the formula. And truth be told, if you forget these, use the formula. So n minus 2 times 180. Okay, so let's look at an example. This is uh, pentagon, convex. Now remember, these work for convex only, right? I believe it says that in the theorem. Yes, only for convex. So if you have a concave um, polygon, don't use this thing. One, two, three, four, five, pentagon, five sides. So n minus two, n is five, times 180, three times 180. I don't have my calculator, I think that's 540. Somebody check my work. Who's got their calculator? Yeah, make sure I'm doing it right because, you know, I'm not having a good week for the mistake. So what does that mean? If you add up all these angles, angle A, B, C, D, and E, if you add them all up, they add up to 540. Now this one is a dodecagon. How many sides is that? 12, 12 right? So N is 12. I can try counting these. Uh, do you ever try counting these things and you look like, where did I start? If you're counting sides, and I usually put a little place where I'm starting, so I know when to stop. Because you could go around a few, a few times here. So n minus 2 times 180. So that's 12 minus 2 times 180. And that's the way I have it here. 10 times 180. So what do they add up to? 1,800 degrees. That's what I would be So if you add up all these angles, they're always going to add up to 1,800 if you have a good deck of dark. So we can find all this information pretty easily. Um, now, if you have a regular polygon, remember what that is. That says you have, um, well, let's see, the measure of the sum of interior angles of any polygon, right, is what? If the sides are x, right, times 1,8, right? This is on your notes here if you're following along here. And each angle in a regular polygon is congruent, right? Because that's the definition of a regular polygon. Congruent sides, congruent angles. So if I want to find one angle, one angle. So I'll, I'll do, um, let's do a simple triangle, right? Let's say this is regular. So what's, what's the measure of one angle? Yeah, let's do this. 60. Now, how do we know that? Because it's 180 altogether. Because these are all congruent, I can just divide by 3. Or think of this as being x, x, and x. x plus x plus x is 3. x is 180. So all I have to do is I take, you take um, the sum of the interior angles, 
and you divide by how many sides you have. So it's kind of an important formula, but it's very, I think it's intuitive. Like, yes, you have to memorize it, but is it easy to kind of refigure it out? Yeah. Right? If this is how you get the sum of all the angles, if all the angles are congruent, just divide by however many angles you have, and that will give you <coughs> one angle. And remember, it has to be regular. This, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same if you have not congruent angles. Um, so if I have a regular pentagon, what's the measure of one angle? And I'm going to try to draw oh, The only thing that a worse circle does is probably that. So regular. Congruent sides, congruent angles. We just did this before. The sum of the interior angles, 5 minus 2 times 180, 3 times 180. So 540, right? This was, this was, now all these are the same. So I take 540 and I divide by 5. And what do I get? Thank you. So each of these angles is going to be 180 degrees. Each of them. And because they all add up to 540. Make sense? Yeah, questions? Uh, yeah, it's, it's not, I don't think this one's too bad. This one's probably fine now. We'll see. Should say that. Other theorems. So that's interior angles. How about external angles? So let's see, external angles. Remember how that works? So I can kind of see my pentagon in here, right? So if I extend the sides, that's an exterior angle. I think this with triangles, right? You extend the side, there's an exterior angle. Extend the side, there's another one. Extend the side. So that's what we did. These are exterior angles. And here's something kind of amazing. No matter how many sides that you have, they always add up to 360. Isn't that amazing? You woke this up. You woke me up. Isn't that amazing? It is. It's always going to be 360. You can have, what is that thing, Google again? Yeah. Yeah. All the exterior angles are going to measure, uh, add up to 360. How come? What? Well, you know what? Luckily, we didn't use induction because otherwise we would have to, right? Remember how inductive proof worked? that I have to show it works for all of them. So I guess eventually I'd have to get to that Google account and try it. But we're using a deductive proof, so we don't have to do that. We're going to suppose we have n sides. So if I have n sides. All right, let's see if I can do this here. The sum of the interior angles, right? Isn't that it? That's, that's this plus this plus this plus this plus this. n minus 2 times 180. Now, each interior and exterior angle, we need this. Isn't that a linear pair? OK, so if I look at all the linear pairs that I have, if I show them. How many linear pairs do I have? Well, one, two, three, four, five, and then it's five. So if that is a hundred, how many linear pairs are there? A hundred. So you have n linear pairs based on the number of sides that you have. Well, each linear pair adds up to 180, right? So my linear pairs on an n-sided polygon are going to be 180 times n. That makes sense. Okay? That's all of them. So if I want to find the sum of just the exterior, I'm going to take the big piece, all the linear pairs, and I'm going to subtract out just the interiors. And then I'll be left with the exteriors. So that would be 180, and that's the, the how many linear pair measures I have, minus these are my interior angles. So let's see if we can just do this. That's 180n. Distribute that negative. Minus n. Oh, wait, minus 180n. I'll look at what I'll do with. Let me, make, let me be actually careful here. I'm going to move that 180 over so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to put it here because it's a little confusing the way it's written. Do you see what I just did? I just used the commutative property to put the 180 over here. And so now what am I getting? 180n minus 180n negative times negative positive 360. Well, these are going to cancel out. 360. So for any sided figure, you're going to have 360 degrees for the external angle sum. I think that's pretty good. Just me. Okay. All right, just me. Um, okay. So here's an example. So find the measure of the sum of the exterior angles of a convex 18. Uh, oh, that sounds like a pain. 18 sided figure, really? Oh, yeah, what's that A doing here? Right? What is that sum? 360. Right, it's always, 
Well, I could say, what if we're Google God, what's the exterior angle? 360. Always going to be 360. So this is like the easy question. Um, find X. All right, so I've got a whole bunch of exterior angles here, right? And what are they all going to add up to these angles? 360. So now I've got to add these up. Really? 4x plus 5. Couldn't get the smaller side of the thing. 4x plus 5. So I, I, didn't, I didn't pick a Google number. We'd be, be here a very, very long time. I don't know. I, make sure I don't mess it up. 4x plus 3. Is that all done? Yeah. And that's going to be 360. All right, let's, let's look at our x's. 4x plus 10x, 15x, 20x, 22, 25x. Okay, all right, 5, 9, 11, 10, 14. Hope it works out nice. All right, 25x, uh, let's just subtract 10. Oh, what's that? What? 14. 14. Oh, we just found X. So you just you have to do what you know. Now, if they're going to ask you to find interior angles, you have to find that sum first. For exterior angles, that's easy. It's always 360. Well, that's not so bad. How about the exterior angle of a regular polygon? Now, one angle. So it's kind of what we did with the interiors, but looking at the exteriors. So what's the measure of the sum of exterior angles? Always 363. And each angle in a regular polygon, they're still congruent. So if I have a regular polygon, I want to know one exterior angle, how do I find it? You take the 360 and divide by how many angles you have, right? Or how many sides that you have. So this one's a, a little bit simpler. Slightly simpler. Maybe a lot simpler. <laughs> so in a regular convex polygon, an interior angle is 180 minus the uh, exterior. So if you know an exterior angle, how easy is it to find the interior angle? Easy. Well, what do you do? You take this, and it's 180 minus that. Isn't it? Find the exterior angle, because they make a linear pair. Let's see if I can. I'm not good at equations. All right, here we go. Right? If you can find this one, then how do you find that one? It's 180 minus this one. It's another way to find the interior angle. So let's see, what's the measure of an exterior angle of a regular hexagon? Okay, so I need to know what are, what's the sum of all the angles in the exterior angles? How many sides or angles does a hexagon have? Six, right? Hex and six, they almost sound alike. Uh, 365 by six. Six degrees. So they're, I think they're easier. Uh, what's the measure of an interior angle of a regular hexagon? Well, if 60 is an exterior angle, how do I find the interior? 180 minus 60 equals 120. Now, we just learned another way to do this, didn't we? Wasn't it um, 180 n minus 2 over n? This is the sum of the interior angles divided by n. Does it work? Well, let's see. Hexagon is 6, so n is 6. So this is going to be a 180 times 4 over 6. Calculator people, which one 80 times 4? And then divide by 6, we get 3. So you can do it either way. You have two options if you want to find the measure of an interior angle. I guess you have two options if you want to find an exterior angle, too. You can do this first, subtract from a 180, and there's your exterior angle. So whichever's easier. Whichever's easier. Use that one. Okay. All right, a couple of examples. Find some of the measures of the interior angles of a convex octagon. Okay. These ones are all about reading. Okay, interior angles, sum of all of them. Okay, so what do they want me to find? You have some octagon, which I totally cannot draw. Pretend there's eight sides here. Okay? And I want to find those angles. So let's see, what's the what's the formula? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. N minus two one eighty or one eighty n minus two. So 180, octagon has 8, right? So what's 180 times 6? Is it this? Is it? I, I'm asking because I don't have a calculator. Yes? Check it. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe me, I, I can make no mistakes, but on a good day, then you can make no mistakes. Okay, so here we go. That's it. 
Uh, well, because now I have to read the questions really carefully. It says, find the sum of the interior angles. So it wants all of them together. Now when you do the dividing, you're finding one in a regular polygon. So we have to be like so careful. It's all, this is more reading than anything. Let's see what this one says to do. The sum of the measures of the interior angles of a convex polygon is 900. Find, uh, classify by the number of sides. So the sum of the interior angles, that they're giving me this. What do they want me to find? This. So 180 times n minus 2. When I went and did that, I came up with 900. So now I have to solve this for n. So now here come the algebra skills. So how do we do this? Yeah, I would divide each side by 180. If you uh, distribute, that's okay too. I think this is a little bit easier. So I'm getting n minus 2 equals, what's 900 five. divided by 180? Is it 5? Okay, add 2 to both sides. So it's 7. So what is this? This is a hexagon. 7 sided figure. You could have done, you could do this. Some people, I don't know, why can't I just do this? You can. should work. I hope so. Uh, 180 n equals, what's 900 uh, plus 360, 1260? Is that right? Yeah. So if you divide that by 180 for me, please tell me seven. Yes, okay. <laughs> Yay! And that works, isn't that great when that works? So either way, right, you choose. I think it's a little bit easier if you divide that through first, add two, I think that's easier. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, find x, oh, it's an easy one. Right, because what do the angles of a quadrilateral add up to? 360. So you're just going to add these things together. Go ahead, you do this. All right, uh, you do the heavy lifting here. This. Yeah. Yeah, there's another way we can think about this. This is nothing wrong with this. You're great. You're perfect. You're perfect. There's that option one is to look at it this way. Not a dumb What's option two? Option two is to say, well, let me extend this. What's the exterior angle that goes with this one? Yeah, why is it 40? 
linear pair. So if this one's 140, that one has to be 40. So it adds up to 180. Okay. So that means that 360 over n had to be 140, right? Or I'm sorry, 40. Right? Isn't that how you get this? So I can swap places here. So that's fine. You choose. Whichever way you want, whichever way you see it better. Uh, obviously a little less math here, so a little less opportunity for error, but they're both correct. Either way is fine. Questions on that? Because I believe, I think, we're on to you guys already. So let's try a few of these and see how this goes. Okay, let's see how we did on these you tries. Um, I'll put up answers if there's one you wanted to go over, we can do that. 720, 17 done, x equals 30. And 43, is that right? Questions on A, B, C, or D? No? Okay, all right. Let's try these guys, E, F, G, H. So here's what I got. E is 140, and F is 30. Yeah. Yes, question. H, okay, so H is one where, um, this is where option one, option two. Uh, each interior angle of a regular end god is 172.8. So I've got some polygon, right? And each one of these is 172.8, and it's regular, right? So how do I find the angles of a polygon when it's regular? Uh, I can do 180n minus 2, which is the sum of all the angles, and divide by n. And it's going to be this, right? And now it starts getting a little messy just with the math. Uh, we have, that's option one. And you can solve it, it'll work. Option two was to say, hmm, let's see, if I extend this out a little bit, what's the measure of that external angle? It's going to be um, 180 minus 172.8. 7.2? So let's see, that's an exterior angle. How do you find the exterior angle? That's 360 over n, right? and it's 7.2. So I can solve this for n or I can solve this for n. Which one looks easier? What are they doing? Yeah, the second one, right? So let's see, I, I just, you know, swap them out, or, you know, multiply both sides by n, then divide by 7.2, and I get 360 over 7.2 is n. We run that through the calculator, what do you get? So this is a 50 gone. Each interior angle is 172.8 degrees. Yes? How do you think it's G? Yeah, it's G. Yes. G? Uh, let's see, I added all these up and I set it equal to 360 because that's the interior angle. So let's see here. I've got an X, I've got 8X, so that's 9X. Plus 4X, 13X. Plus, now I added all the numbers up. Let's see. Look at here. I added 54 plus 45 plus 50. Did you miss one? I got um, 191. Okay. Yeah, you probably will. I figured that's what happened. And that's those are the common kinds of mistakes with these. Um, is this right? Is that what you guys got? And then when I subtracted it, 13x equals 169. So x is 13. I mean, you can check them. You know, you have a calculator, right? Just plug them in, add them up, make sure you get 360. It's a way to check it. You know, with a calculator, that's not a big deal. So questions on any of these? Any questions? Right? It's not that they're so hard. They're very simple formulas. It's more a matter of just reading those questions carefully. Do you want an interior angle? Do you want an exterior angle? Is it a regular polygon? Uh, you know, what are they asking you to find? And that's really the, the key to this. So, um, those are polygon angles.